Did you know there is a real-life Hannibal Lecter living in England? To this day, he has never been caught and roams the streets freely. His name is Nicholas Fuchs, and he's a journalist and well-known writer for many famous publications. And he's never actually killed or eaten anybody, as far as we know. But of course, this is not a crime channel, it's a style channel. So I have long followed Nick's Instagram, and he is noted for his statement suits, which bear a striking resemblance to those of Hannibal Lecter in the TV show played by Mads Mikkelsen. So he is a real example of wearing statement suits in his daily life. So let's take a look at the clothing style of Hannibal in the TV show and examine what makes a statement suit and how to style it. I assume Hannibal Lecter needs no introduction. Who hasn't seen Silence of the Lambs? But in the TV show, Mads Mikkelsen explores the more refined aspects of his character, such as his taste in wine, food, culture and style. Hannibal mostly wears what are called statement suits. Most gentlemen would, if any, have maybe one or two. But for Hannibal, it's his go-to style and they're quite breathtaking. Welcome back to The Love of Suits. If we're new here, we find inspiration on how to dress well for the most stylish men on the screen. There's a new video every Wednesday, and we drop shorts and community posts throughout the week. We're introduced to Hannibal in his day job as a psychiatrist wearing a classic Hannibal suit. He actually has a varied wardrobe, but his favorite suit pattern is window pane. A window pane is an open check, leaving much of the plain fabric intact, and the name is self-explanatory and the design easy to spot. A Glen Check or Prince of Wales has much heavier check patterns and the check is the focus of the fabric, whereas the window pane is much lighter but conversely can be much bolder. You can also have a double window pane or ghost window pane where there are additional lines or colours to make it more detailed or to allow for better colour pairing with shirts and ties. This first suit is a mid blue worsted wool three piece. The window pane check is a mix of blue and cream. The jacket has notched lapels but roped shoulders. They are strong pronounced sleeve heads that rise above the jacket shoulder and associated with Savile Row and in particular the French tailor Chiffinelli who is credited with refining and popularising the style. This makes the jacket style masterful and noticeable. Strong shoulders for a strong personality, perfectly suited for Hannibal. It's a two button jacket with a ticket pocket, that is an extra hip pocket on the right hand side originally designed for gentlemen to carry theatre tickets and in this case most likely used by Hannibal for actual tickets rather than just style. The trousers are not cuffed at the bottom, which lends themselves to a more formal style. I really believe that no suit is complete until you've matched it with the right shirt. It can really make or break a suit. So the next time you plan to buy a suit, make sure you know exactly what shirt you're going to wear with it when you buy it. And in Hannibal's wardrobe, the shirts and tie are not only matched, but used to enhance an already eye-catching suit. His shirt has a subtle check and matched very closely to the necktie but blends with the rich, creamy colour lines of the suit. While the shirt is a nice match, let's take a closer look at his necktie. It's a plain silk twill weave, but the knot is a feature here and not just a practical choice. Once again, we see Hannibal choose a distinguished style. This is the double or full Windsor knot. It is a large knot and very suited to shirts with a spread collar or even normal collars, but not a pointed or narrow collar. It's basically two knots, one on the right and one on the left, creating a large triangle and you finish it off as you would any necktie, creating the characteristic large knot. This is an integral part of Hannibal's style, and it is not for the faint-hearted. Though I feel Hannibal has knotted his intentionally oversized to make as grand an impression as possible. There are many instructional videos available on YouTube, but you can take a look at this very clear how-to video here. Although we'll be focusing primarily on Hannibal's killer style, let's take a look at one of the other well-dressed gentlemen of the show, played by the fabulous Lawrence Fishburne, Special Agent Jack Crawford. His flavour of dressing is more polished, but also low-key when contrasted with Hannibal's. His suit is a subtle pinstripe, black in appearance, but consisting of lighter grey and burgundy lines. Not as obvious as the lines in Hannibal's. It would appear black or dark grey at a distance, revealing its more charming elements at closer quarters. This is a subtlety lacking in the psychiatrist's fabrics and shoulders. But similarly, this allows Jack to pair interesting shirts with it, and he has matched a dark burgundy shirt with a similar pocket square and a black and burgundy necktie, allowing for some variety while keeping the colour palette limited to an astringent two, black and burgundy. The tie knot is a far more understated affair. I'll include some more of Jack's suit's analysis in the video as a counterpoint to Hannibal's taste. And then there is the protagonist Will, and his comfortable casual dress sense. This is of course in sympathy with his intellectual professorial profession, yet reflecting somewhat on his broken psyche and it needs to be inconspicuous. The three main characters are all opposing points on an interesting style triangle. Not that he is dressed badly, but every choice of style communicates your character and your intentions to others even before you open your mouth. Will wears a soft Harris Tweed style sports coat. If you want to learn more about sports coats, then see my video on the gentleman starring Matthew McConaughey. 
Tweet has a visual softness to the fabric, if a little scratchy in feel to some. He is wearing a busy check flannel or brush cotton shirt with an unstructured collar, again emphasizing softness. The tie is a minimalist striped tie. He is obviously a man not comfortable wearing a tie and it does not go well with this type of shirt, which is meant to be worn casually. I wish I could remove it to see how it looks without the necktie. Oh, there it is. Thanks. Yes, that is better. Beneath he's wearing jeans. The sports coat and jeans is a classic smart casual package. The jacket really smartens up the jeans and shirt look and the jeans relax the sports coat. If you are thinking of taking the first steps to dressing better, this is a great stepping stone to use and probably only requires the purchase of a jacket. And you can then dress it up or down further with your choice of footwear. A pair of sneakers would weigh in heavily on the casual side, but I would definitely recommend a brown leather shoe or boot, which in themselves offers a wide range, from casual shoe to dress boot. If you're enjoying this video so far, please hit that like button. Or even better, subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any. It really helps the channel. And we have a great community here in the comments section, so please check it out if you haven't already. Lots of conversation and information to enjoy. Hannibal's second window paint suit is a heavier affair than the previous one and has peak lapels. It's a grey three piece with a light grey blue double window pane. A heavier check than a single window pane, but still nowhere as dense as a Glen check. The large size of the check makes it even more striking. I thought the bright blue shirt was denim at first, though on closer inspection the thread of the fabric makes me think it is silk, which would make more sense for Hannibal. Though denim would be a good match here too, and it would be a great way to dress down the suit a little if you are not as flamboyant. And the delicious paisley tie is the first of many. The neckties throughout the show are sourced from different makers and stores. They are fabulous and remind me of the ties in the TV show The Gentleman. Check out my review here. If you are interested in such vintage style ties, then Eaton shirts have an interesting selection, as well as superb shirts, obviously. Excellent, but pricey. And Hannibal has matched his pocket square expertly. Not an exact match to the tie, but pulling its influence from the colours. That's the right way to do it. A much darker low-key check on this suit allows him to wear a striped shirt. The trick to wearing statement suits like Hannibal's is to ensure to match it with the plain shirt to tone it down a little, so it doesn't become too much for the eyes. But a much more subtle check on this suit allows him to liven the shirt up a little. This time his pocket square matches his shirt rather than his tie, and the tie seems a promise of nothing. It's outstanding on its own right, and as an accessory it doesn't need to match, but just needs not to clash. I like how Will has added a sweater to his clothes in this scene. He is still wearing one of the busy check shirts beneath, but this time without a tie and covered with a brown sweater. I think this illustrates how a simple change can improve this look. The texture of the wool sweater is much closer to the jacket than the shirt, and without the necktie it all blends together better, creating a more harmonised look even with the brighter colour added. And Agent Crawford retains his sombre dark wardrobe with another sleek suit, but this time with the blue shirt and interesting necktie. And Hannibal has on the same suit and shirt he had on previously, but with a different tie. Though primarily a rusty colour, it has very nice blue highlights in it to make it work with the shirt. So this answers the question, what would Hannibal wear out of the office? In the woods, the other members of the team are dressed for the outdoors in more typical garb, but Hannibal, being a man with certain taste, is unlikely to simply throw on a wax jacket. Of course, also being a man of resources, he has on a windowpane heavy tweed sports coat made of deep earth tone colours that are matched to the surroundings of the wood. So even in fine clothing, he can still appear dressed appropriately. Also, not wearing a full suit makes him appear more relaxed and at ease with the rough terrain. He still has on a blue shirt and a necktie, but he has exchanged his vest for a zip-up sweater, keeping him warm and stylish at the same time. This is an excellent example of how to be versatile with a few changes to your wardrobe and stay true to your own style. Which leads us back to our non-cannibal Hannibal, Nicholas Fuchs, a writer with similar fine taste in clothing and dining. He has written over 25 books on history as well as being a journalist and editor for magazines such as GQ and Vanity Fair, as well as having two chips off the old block but that have followed their dad in dressing with style and epicurean interests. He does a lot of appearance at menswear events and public speaking where he is dressed in some fine attire. I don't have any statements since myself, and have only recently begun to appreciate the window pane pattern. The great thing about classic style is your opinions change over time so your interests tend to stay fresh. So do you think you have what it takes to wear statements like Hannibal's, or do you already own one? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for tuning in and staying till the end, and I'll see you next Wednesday. So what am I wearing today? Well, for starters, this hat is from Laird Hatters in the UK. They sell everything from berries to fedoras, and they have the most coolest staff in the world. It's a great place to buy a hat. This hat cost about £250. Not cheap, but they do have cheaper models. The scarf is a cashmere scarf I got in Barbara. It was on sale at the time, only £20. That was pretty cheap. And the coat I'm wearing is a custom-made cashmere coat. 
It only cost about £400, but I had it made in Shanghai when I lived there, so that's quite cheap. It is a knee-length coat, and it keeps me very warm in the cold and windy winters in Dublin. So I'd like to apologise for many of the dining-related puns in the last video. Some of them were apparently in bad taste. I know they're a trifle over the top, but I was just trying to spice up the vocabulary. 